Good day folks, this is Greg Judy, Green Pastures Farm. Today I'm standing by a new pond that we built. Um, this was actually what we would typically call an old frog pond. So the, the previous landowner uh, owned this for many years. It was actually dug with a uh, horse and slip scraper back in the 20s. Um, the way it worked is they took a... Uh, it was a drag they pulled behind a set of horses and it would scoop up a you know a couple of wheelbarrow fulls of dirt and they'd pull it over the dam there and they'd dump it and they'd come back and get another load and uh, i was talking to the old landowner about it and he said well i asked him i said marshall how long did it take you to build a pond like that oh he said greg back in those days we didn't really keep track of time he said you just did it and when you were done you were done you know it just wasn't really any keeping track of how long it took to do something you just started a job and you you kept at it till you got done i thought that was kind of neat um today of course we can bring dozers in and that's what i did here uh, this pond was about a foot deep of the water um, the cattle had been allowed to get into the pond for you know last 60 years and so they just filled it in that's what animals do when you allow them into a pond they'll just fill the pond in with mud and then you got to bring the dozer in and you know five ten fifteen years and dig it all out again that's called uh, wasting resources and money and fuel and not the way to do it um we've been drinking from this pond because when we were here about a month and a half ago with the cows this was our water source okay it wasn't this full i mean this pond has really come up in the last uh, i'd say four weeks because all the snow melt we had a couple of rains that were two inches three inches and but th this this folks is not your ideal pond site now it's centered in the middle of the farm and i love the position of it where it's at i don't like my watershed though <laughs> folks it doesn't have one that's why it's taking forever to fill up uh johnny my dozer operator we built uh 10 ponds uh, several years ago and this is the only one that hasn't filled up and I, I was beginning to think it was leaking it's not leaking it just doesn't catch any rainwater it's going to fill but it's going to take it probably the rest of this year but here's the beauty part of it is we've got it up now far enough on our pipe here that i can go ahead and put in my tire tank which i've got behind here i'm going to show you that configuration here in a minute but that's two inch schedule uh, 40 pipe i've got a cap on it and I use nylon rope, don't use wire, and I nylon rope that tie to an inch and a half fiberglass post. Don't use a steel post. It will rust off in time, then your whole pipe's out there floating around, it's going to get busted off, and you're going to have mud and crawdads and fish and frogs coming into your tank, and it might even get stopped up. I use a quarter inch drill bit, and there must be a hundred holes you can kind of see them there they're drilled all the way up and i even drilled holes in the top of that cap so there's probably around 100 quarter inch holes in there that keeps all the debris from going into my tire tank here on the back but man we've got some water we've got some water on, our, on that pipe now so we're gonna go ahead and put in our tire tank so this summer there's not gonna be any more of these cows walking on the edge of this bank i hated it and they chewed up i had some pretty good big blue stem on here and fescue and you know you do what you got to do and here's the deal everything they trampled on the side of that bank there that's going to be underwater anyway so it's not a huge deal uh we had this whole thing seeded and strawed and we didn't get a stand of grass over there it actually rained so hard it washed the straw off <clears throat> or the hay so that's the place we got to fix. We're going to bring a big round bale over here with a Greg Judy bale unroller and unroll it. And we'll take a pitchfork and we're going to cover that whole side after I put down a ton of fescue seed on that. I mean, it's going to be so thick on there that the seed's going to be touching each other. That's what you got to do. When you have clay like that, you got to put the seed on extra thick because, you know, he dug all the good dirt off of that bank putting this dam up. But Johnny, Johnny came in with a D7 equivalent dozer, and he pushed on this thing, and he pushed on it, and he was really scared. He, the, the mud was so th deep in here. It was seven, eight foot deep. He was just scared that mud was going to grab that dozer and drag it into the pond. So he could only take about a foot, maybe, at a time, maybe eight inches. 
Because, I mean, that, that left track, as he came across here, he was pushing it out. He had a great big V cutting the dam over here. And I've got a mountain of mud down here. Uh, it's all dried out now, and it's got grass growing on it. And it's going to be some really good fertility. And if I get Johnny back here, I'll probably have him spread that out over the landscape back there. And, boy, you talk about some good fertility. 50 years of muck and, and sediment. It's all back there in that pile. Uh, dead crawdads, fish, pollywogs, you name it. It's in that pile of mud back there. Uh, we've got the fish in here. We put the uh, chub minnows in, what they call the shiner minnows. Those are our, uh, some people call them fathead minnows. That's a bait source uh, for the, the game fish. And then we put in channel cat and bluegill last fall. And then the bass will go in in June of this year. There's our fish attractants. We've got to drag those down in the pond. We're going to put a, a concrete block on those for each one. And you can put, use a steel post and use nylon rope, anything. But you got to secure those big cedars. That's our fish attractants. And uh, you know, put fish attractants in your ponds when you build them. You don't want a bare pond out here. You've got to have some place for those bait fish to, to lay their eggs in and to get away from their predators so they all don't get eaten. And your fish growth will be double. Your fish growth will be double by putting fish attractants in. Think about it as a briar patch, like for rabbits and coyotes. A rabbit can outrun a coyote for 50 feet. It's the same way in these cedars. If you put them all the way, and I don't have enough in here. I've got four. We're going to probably put four across the face of this dam. And where I'm standing over here, we're going to put some on this side over here too. I want this to be plenty of cover for the fish, the, 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 the small fish. Here's the other thing. Uh, we have a lot of river otters. They released those in, uh, I don't know, 20 years ago. Now the river otters are just decimating farm ponds. They're coming in eating all the fish. And, of course, the fish can't get away. But if you have cedars, they found out that severely reduces the predation on your fish by having cedars, big ones, that the fish can get in and the otters have a hard time catching them in those cedars. So I want brush piles all the way around here, not only for fish to hide in, but also for the otters where they can't catch all their fish. But this is going to be cool. So here's my two-inch line, and it went through the dam here. I'm going to come up over the top. Here we go. There's my rock. Uh, that's a 16-ton, an inch-and-a-half clean rock. And the mud that Johnny pushed out is... Uh, clear out here and I remember Johnny pulled his dozer out on that and I mean it was soupy I'm like man I'd like you to smooth that off and he, he stopped right here and he goes Greg I just can't get out on that I mean it was soup but he built me a nice little bench here and then he's got another nice flat spot up here this is going to be awesome folks this is my shut off up here and I put a six inch pipe around it and it's got a cap on it and while i'm shooting the video all it is it, that is a brass shut off in there pvc cap on it you always got to put a cap on it and then i trenched out here i didn't trench johnny dug me a ditch out here and uh put a two inch riser right here of course that'll be chopped off flush with the uh the earth moving tire there's my rock and so the the tire is going to go around this pipe and then i'm going to trench a drain line off this bank right here i mean that's a steep bank going down so i'm only going to have to go let's see 20 feet maybe of sewer line and i've got my drain so i can clean my tank out whenever i get mud or dirt in it and then my geotextile will go down <clears throat> and then the tire and then the the sackcrete it takes about five to six bags of sackcrete you pour it in there about four inches deep and then the rock will go on top of the textile around the tank and i told you wrong it's not you don't put textile under the tire tank use plastic and the reason i use plastic underneath the tire is uh in the middle of the tires when you pour sackcrete especially in the summertime and it's hot that sack creek, the water will absolutely get away from that concrete and go right into your dirt. And the faster your concrete cures, the more likely it is it's going to crack. And so if you put 
plastic underneath there and then pour your sacrete in there that plastic holds the water and it cures really slow and boy you have got a nice bottom uh, we've got several tire tanks around our farms and they're all holding really well none of them leak and part of that is the way we poured them i just used a wheelbarrow and a hoe and i did one bag at a time i mean you're only talking five bags anybody can mix five bags of sacrete uh, you just add water to it and you get it a little bit runny and use a spade and get that sacrete in underneath the bead of that bottom tire so you don't get any leakage coming out underneath the bead and there's the final step you put that in after we put a landscaping timber around here this is going to be put in this summer when it gets drier we tried to put one in <laughs> about three weeks ago and i'll probably put that video up it was a muddy bugger we didn't get it in we got the line put in we had to trench a line and uh that's made a pretty good little video of it but i can't get the tire in there. it's just too muddy and uh so we're gonna wait for it to dry up and uh anyway we're excited to get water get the cattle out of the bank of that pond out here in the open okay and now man i've got you know it's right out here in the middle of this farm so it's really cool uh it's, it's centered in a great place and 